Every day there is a new Chinese company with a new model. We have been covering intern LM's model for quite some time now and as is the case with other Chinese labs, this company is also evolving very steadily. This time they have released the mini version of their intern S1 model. Intern S1 is the model which we covered three weeks ago and there are various other S1 models in audio and other modalities which we already have covered on the channel. In this video we are going to install this mini S1 model on our local system and we will check out how exactly this works. This is Fahad Meza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe as that helps a lot. So what exactly is this Intern S1 Mini? It's a multimodal reasoning model that has been developed using the same code technique as its predecessor which was Intern S1. This model is built on 8 billion parameter dense language model Quen3 which is again another amazing model. Also, it uses 300 million parameter vision encoder from Intern itself, which is called as Intern WIT. It has also undergone extensive pre-training on a vast data set of 5 trillion tokens. So you can do text inference, you can do image inference, you can do video inference with this model. And we are going to test out all three of those. So let's get started. I am going to use this Ubuntu system and I have one GPU card NVIDIA H100 with 80 GB of VRAM courtesy mass compute. You don't need that much VRAM if you're just looking to do text and image but if you're looking to do video you definitely need 80 GB even that is going to take a bit of a time and that is where the developer of this model recommend you should have at least two GPUs of 80 GB VRAM in order to do the video inference with a good quality and in a good quick way. But I will try it out with one GPU card. So um, if you're looking to rent a GPU on very affordable price, you can find the link to master compute in video's description with a discount coupon or code um, for 50% for range of GPU. So please do check it out. Everything is in video's description. Now let me quickly create a virtual environment with Conda so that we could install all the prerequisites and everything. And it shouldn't take too long. It's very, very quick. It's not mandatory, but always a good idea. So let me now just run this command. This is going to take a bit of a time. So let's wait. And while it installs everything, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. Everything is installed. Now let me launch my Jupyter notebook and we will play with this model in the browser environment. And now let's download our model. And I'm just going to go with this usual transformer stuff. And the model is being downloaded. As you can see, there are only four shards of it. The model is not huge. It is just for video inference. I believe it takes a bit more time and more VRAM. Anyway, we will see. And the model is now loaded. Let's do the inference. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to check some of the text prompts, then image and then video. So first up, let's try it out with some of the text stuff. Now for the text, what you know, it's not that huge model. So maybe let's uh, try it out with some of the editing tasks and that sort of stuff. Now let me paste it here. So I'm just going to paste it here in front of you. So this is where I'm asking it that the following sentence extracted from a poorly edit, edited academic manuscript contains numerous grammatical errors, inconsistencies and all this stuff. And I'm asking this to fix it. So let's run this. And by default, the reasoning is enabled and that is where model takes long time. So it has generated the output here and I will also show you how you can disable the thinking. But if you look at this response, now you see it has thought about it. And then it is after thinking it is just uh, sliced the whole thing into pieces and then it is going about it and then it has given me the corrected version it is self-reflecting checking what it has corrected and then it is again rectifying it it is going over and over around its revised stuff 
checking alternatives and then thinking finished and then it has given me revised sentences and this is good where it has told me what it has changed from previous to the next one very nice also the tense and clarity so look i think this is really good stuff it's very very nice okay now let's give it another task which requires another uh, thinking so i'm asking it to create a roaster um, as we need a chef and a waiter for two concurrent functions every saturday night function one is at french embassy so the waiter needs to speak french and then function two is at indian cultural association and then there are some constraints that some people are available on some dates, some are not, some people don't get along, but it has to create the roster for the next quarter. So, sorry, let's go and run this. While it runs for text, let's also check the VRAM consumption. So, for text in front, it is taking around 17.5 gig of VRAM, as you can see here. And as the thinking mode is on, it takes a bit of a time. And the model has come back with the response where you can see that it has thought for a while and then it created this roster if I just scroll down and it has thought for a long time because it's a lot of reasoning which happened behind the scene and I'm just scrolling down because I have set the context to over 32k so I'm just quickly scrolling down there you go so it is thinking thinking and then uh, because if I just go up, you see it has cut off until these tokens. So it couldn't show me, but it, if you see the chat, it would have um, shown you the roster. Now, if you just want to skip this, we just want to see the answer. All you need to do is to just print or just give this option, enable thinking false. So let me now run the same one with enable thinking false. And interestingly enough, when you do that, the VRAM jumps to 30, over 35 gig, which is very interesting. And uh, this is all on the basis of this uh, Max New Token 2, by the way. And this is a roster, which looks pretty good without thinking. Well done. Okay. So this is what it does in terms of uh, language. Now, I will ask it a coding question, but these qu models are not really meant for coding. But having said that let's try it out okay there you go so we have this coding question i'm going to run it and then we will check out and thinking is uh, not enabled here so hopefully it should be very quick vram consumption is just staying over 35 now let's wait for it and there you go it has come back with the answer where this is a java application i'll just scroll down here and then you can check out there are different classes, different methods and all that stuff. There you go. Looks pretty good. Explanation is there. And then how to run, which is always very helpful. So look, I think language, coding, uh, even math and all of this looks pretty good to me. Now, let's check out how exactly it does the image manipulation. Not manipulation, inference with the images. And this is a code which I'm going to use for inference. I am specifying an image from my lo local system. I'm going to display it and then I will ask it what type of building is this. So let me run this. This is a building which is in Lahore, Pakistan and it's a mosque. So let's see if Bordel is able to detect what sort of building is this. And if I check out the VRAM consumption, even for image inference, it is just staying around 36 gig of vram let's wait for it to come back and there you go so this is the response the thinking is on so model is thinking it is checking that okay and look at this so it says what's that, what type of building it is commonly used in an indian architecture because it is an indian subcontinent it is talking about domes and minarets that is like mausoleum and then it is talking about other so you see it already has narrowed it down to a specific geographical location and typical type of architecture and then it is talking about mosque with mausoleum so it is thinking and it says the building them it is so now it has got the location wrong it has got the building wrong and it is not a mausoleum 
it's a moss so it was close but even with reasoning it was unable to figure out what sort of building it is it is nowhere near a mausoleum mausoleum it is a totally different architecture but anyway i would call it a fail for the model so in the next one i'm just going to add this enable thinking false and let's try out one more okay next up i'm going to give it another image and i'm going to ask it what is the location of the image so this is a monas in jakarta their national uh, symbol so let's check it out and i think it got it right you see it is jakarta indonesia very nice and it is just talking about what exactly that is now these models are not really well suited for ocr and stuff for extracting that information so i would suggest that you should be using it for ocr but for general image question answering these models are pretty good as you can already see now let me quickly show you how would you use it for video understanding or video inference and for the video this is a code i'm going to use same thing i'm providing this local path of the video and just asking it to describe it we are generating the token and then we are printing the output same thing where we are encoding the input to the model with tokenizer after applying the chat template model is generating the result and we are decoding it back and printing it out now before i move forward let me quickly show you the video which i'm going to run here so this is a video ai generated one so there are two kangaroos who are in the boxing ring and they are just trying to do some sparring okay let's go back and then let me quickly run this and while it runs you can see that it is still consuming just under 30 6 gig of vram so we should be good but it is taking a bit of a time so i will just wait and then i will let you know how long did it take to get the answer and there you go it took around six minutes to come back and the answer looks quite good where it is telling us all about the video that it's an unusual performance featuring two kangaroos on a circular stage dramatically illuminated by a central spotlight and then it is describing it all the environment subtle movement shifting their weight and briefly tapping their gloves together very nice actually that was a bit nuanced gesture but it has captured it quite well so look i think for image inference or video inference looks like a, a solid choice at the moment uh, same goes for the general language tasks and math task even it can do coding so seems like a good check of all trade let me know how you go what do you think about this model please like the video and subscribe to the channel as that helps a lot thank you for all the support